Schwing, Hwing, Kling, Ein, Saum, Ing, Hwing, Schwing, Kae, Ila, Ring, Asaka, Halla, Ring, Saka, La, Ring, Sao, Ein, Kling, Ring, Schwing, Aum. Namaste. I'm very happy to welcome you to the first episode of a new major series on Sri Vidya, the Dasha Mahavidya, the Ten Universal Goddesses. Now, where did these ten goddesses come from? Well, there are innumerable forms of Shakti and they serve many different functions, actually all the functions on the cosmic level. So why these particular 10? Because they have a special relevance for the seekers who are in search of enlightenment and they help the sadhakas on their way. Uh, I'm going to read a nice verse, a devotional verse, that describes the position of the self-realized devotees. O Bhavani, sages and saints describe your gross forms as Kali and others. The Vedas speak about your subtle mantra forms, Kamakala Rupa. Poets adore you as the origin of speech, Shabda Brahman. Philosophers think of you as the root of the worlds, Mula Prakriti. But we devotees think of you as the universal ocean of mercy and compassion, Karuna Rasa Sagara, and nothing else. Beautiful verse. And this is the mood in which we'll be approaching these goddesses. Here they are. These 10 goddesses, you saw their picture in the intro, and we'll be going into each one of these one at a time. Now, who are they? Kali, Tara, Tripura Sundari, Bhuvaneshwari, Tripura Bhairavi, Chinnamashta, Dumavati, Bhagalamukhi, Matangi, and Kamalatmika. These are the ten forms, and each of them has a special significance for the sadhaka. And so we'll be going into detail, great detail, <laughs> drawn from the authentic Sri Vidya scriptures about each one of these 10 goddesses and how they can help you attain self-realization. Now, how does that work? Well, let's take a deep dive into the scriptures. Shakti, the feminine divinity, is a powerful entity. Shakti has many forms, from motherly nurturers to powerful destroyers, and from bestowers of knowledge and wealth to removers of all illusion at last. The Shaktis encompass every aspect of the physical and spiritual realms. The ten Mahavidyas, or wisdom goddesses, represent several aspects of the divine feminine who guide the spiritual seeker toward moksha, liberation, for the devotional seeker, these forms of Shakti can be approached in moods of reverence, love, and increasing intimacy. For the knowledge-oriented seeker, these Shakti forms represent various states of inner awakening along the path to self-realization. Now, we're going to be approaching this from the Tantric point of view. Now, a lot of people don't understand Tantra. They confuse it with sensual indulgence, but actually it's not. Because while the Tantrika may perform acts of apparent sensuality, actually, if he is properly guided and grounded in sadhana, 
He does these things without being attached to them. And this is the point. To satisfy the desires that arise because of one's prarabdha karma, but without becoming attached to them, which converts them into sources of suffering. So by avoiding the cause of suffering, attachment, and being only attached to the goddess, then the tantrika can do anything without becoming entangled. So now how does the process of self-realization work? Why should one worship Shakti? Shiva is always self-effulgent. Hence, he is addressed as Prakasha, directly visible. And Shakti is his power to distribute his light so the universe is made visible. She is Vimarsha, cognizable. Light without cognizance or cognizance without light are useless. Thus, Prakasha Vimarsha Samarsyatmaka Parabrahmasvarupini. Shiva and Shakti are always interdependent and also inherent. So you can't have Shiva without Shakti, and you can't have Shakti without Shiva. They're like yin and yang. They're mutually interdependent. Where there was one, there was also the other. <laughs> and this goes for any time, any place, and for any body. So if we're going to attain Shiva, which means unconditioned consciousness, self-realization, we're going to have to make friends with Shakti. <laughs> There's no getting around it because she is the one who actually reveals Shiva at the climax of self-realization. In a human being, Shiva exists as the individual soul and Shakti exists as Maya. Again, as the soul and Maya, they're inseparable. However, separation occurs at the time of self-realization. Shakti moves aside, revealing the true nature of Shiva. He can be revealed only by her. So now this is a little bit different than the typical path of sadhana that's preached by the dualists. Huh? The dualistic path says you have to repress your desires. You have to conquer Maya. But you know, you can't conquer Maya. She's too strong. She is embedded in everything in the whole universe, including our own bodies and minds. So for us to attempt to suppress or conquer or transcend Shakti, <laughs> it's just impossible. Wherever we go, there she is. So how is it really supposed to work? In the final stages of self-realization, she becomes the guru, Nama 603, Guru Murtihi, and imparts the knowledge of Shiva, Nama 727, Shiva Jnana Pradayani, to the aspirant. Apart from material gain, she is worshipped for realizing the self, Shiva. Hence, worshipping Shakti has attained great significance and is often called the Shakta cult or tradition. So we are Shaktas. Huh? We're following this tradition. And we understand that actually Shakti or Maya is the guru. How is that? Well, Maya is the illusion that covers the self. So she is personified as Shakti. If we want to remove this covering, she's the only one who can do it. We can't do it by ourselves. So we worship her, we adore her. She's very beautiful. She is everything desirable and everything noble and everything pure and spiritual. She is love and Shiva is her beloved. 
So if we want to meet Shiva, if we want to see him directly, she has to step aside. And she does this when we are properly qualified. Shakti has two aspects. One is spiritual in nature. This is known as Chit Shakti, the power of consciousness. And the other is Maya Shakti, the power of delusion, relating to the materialistic aspects of life. Then, what is the difference between Shiva and Shakti? In reality, there is no difference. And they are so interdependent that one without the other becomes inert. There's a nice verse about this, which we'll get to in our more detailed videos later on. And we're trying to give the overview here as a prologue to the whole series. So how does this all work? Shiva is static energy and his own power, Shakti, Svatantriya Shakti, is dynamic energy. They are also known as Nirguna Brahman and Saguna Brahman. Only after realizing Saguna Brahman can one realize Nirguna Brahman, the purest form of consciousness, Shiva. But for realizing Shiva or merging into him, we need her stamp of approval. The main purpose of worshiping her is to get her grace to realize or merge with Shiva. Nama 625, Kaivalya So this is called the Tantra path, or technically the Kaula path, uh, because she is the path, she is the route, how we get from material consciousness to spiritual consciousness, how we get from Jagrat to Turiya. So we've been delving into consciousness over the past few episodes and preparing the way for this series because we're going to use these terms about consciousness very interchangeably throughout this whole series. And you have to be familiar with how it all works so you don't get lost. So anyway, this is our new series and I hope you will watch every episode and learn how to please Shakti and attain the ultimate in self-realization. Aum Tatsat, Aum Shakti Aum.